So I wanted to give you all an uh, update on Project Century. Um, but before we go out and I show you what we've got, I got an order in from Offshore Electrics. And I'll show you what we got. So we've got one of the H1919. So this is the 19 Reg 38 bar. These are all the way at the bottom on Offshore Electrics ABC. These are my favorite props. This is uh, the same 1715 I have. I also have, I believe, uh, 1915 in this, and this is a 1919. So, really big prop. This is going to be a rigger prop. Now, I also got some new version 3 of the QS8s. And this is the main subject of what I'm talking about right now. Um, are these Octora. They're the V props, okay? And I didn't realize this, but this is one eighth shaft, so that one really isn't going to work for me for you know what I had planned. But I actually have the 942 version of this prop. I just didn't have any of the smaller ones. So this is a 35 mil, 1.9 pitch, very aggressive prop. Only thing I can try this on is my mini hydroplane, my 17 inch hydro. Now I've got some hot, um, some new turn fins for that from J&R Marine. He went ahead and made me two and sent me two. So we'll prep this prop and we'll test this prop and his turn fins in a, uh, a future video coming up in the next few weeks. And I've got this 37 mil and I got this 40 mil. They're by far some of the most gorgeous props when they're all finished and done. And I love Octora because they're they're honestly so close to being truly balanced once you clean up the residual mold prints and just run them you know sand them down a little bit sharpen them they're they're so close to balance from the get-go it just makes you know prepping your own prop a lot easier ABC props on the other hand sometimes you'll get a hub that's out of balance you know that's off center wasn't drilled right um, just so many variables when it comes to trying to balance an ABC prop. But Octora doesn't make, you know, raked props like this that I've seen personally. But um, we've got another fly color Kraken 120, and that's what we needed for the uh, Project Century build. So I went ahead and ordered it. Offshore Electrics had 10 of the 180s and 10 of the 120s finally in stock. So enough of me showing you what I got in my recent order. Let's go out and check out Project Century. So for full transparency, I've shot this video twice already and edited it twice and something in the data of the video is corrupt. So I'm basically going to go over a bunch of stuff that I did and for some reason the videos just will not piece together. So we're going to talk about um, basically what I've done to Project Century in a very short amount of time. <laughs> my kids have taken over my hobby table out here in the garage and it has become their hobby table until we go to Comic Con. So hey, at least they're having fun. But let me get all the pieces together. Alright, so here is the boat and I wanted to we're, we're going to go over this in a very short snippet amount of time, okay? So, right now, the ESC I have in there is the Shark G2 100 amp ESC. And it fits, alright? My original plan was to run the Fly Color Kraken 150. The only place I've seen these for sale is on Alibaba. I ordered the 180 and I said, screw it, might as well order the 150 too. But um, the, the 150 and the 180, are I've yet to see anything different in, in the two. So my suggestion is if you want one, get the 180. But I blew a capacitor out on it literally in the first 45 seconds of running the 180. So it's sitting in my parts bin. Now I also had a fly color 90 with the cooling block removed. That's what Big B runs in his. And then in my main original rigger, this is the ESC I run. So in this rigger right here, we've done 91 miles an hour with it. I have the Kraken 120 in there. And you can see just how different that setup is compared to a new one. Remember, I soldered on the 4mm bullets directly to the board 
in these spots and did away with the wires. So because I was having such a issue getting the ESC to fit, right? I could get it in there, but the problem is I couldn't get it back far enough to get a 4S pack in here. We may not run a 4S pack since we're 5250 kV. This was supposed to be a 3S boat, but I wanted to try to run 4S and hit 100 miles an hour. So we have to be able to fit a 4S pack. The 150 won't fit because the capacitors are too fat. That is literally what I found after hours and hours of back and forth trying different variations of fitment putting the ESC in the front, putting it on the side, sliding it under the motor, so many variables there. That's what I found. That was the conclusion that I had learned in the last video that just for some reason won't go. See the size of the capacitor difference? These right here are 560 microfarads totaling up to 1,120, and these are 1,000s, so they total up to 2,000 microfarads. So you've got a lot of bigger capacitors here. But I've never had an issue with the old boat running the 120. So we're going to save this because I have a special motor coming from Tenshock. Tenshock is making me a custom 2967 or 2968, whatever the, there, there is, right? So their, their Evo motor, they call it a 1540. I don't really know what that specs out in length, but the biggest that they sell and offer is 3850 kV. Sent them an email, said, hey, can you make something around 4200? They said, we can make something around 4100. So I went ahead and Tenshock is making me a custom 4100-ish kV 1540 motor because this one's probably too high of a kV. Um, but it's literally only a hundred bucks when I bought that motor, so this was fairly cheap in comparison. Now, my concern is, I'm not certain if the Shark G2 100 will handle this amount of amperage. It's supposed to be 140-ish amps on that motor if you run it at its maximum allowed, you know, limitations. So I'm not sure if a 100 amp ESC is going to handle it. Same goes for the Flycolor 120. That was really why I wanted to fit the 150 in there because I truly believed a 150 ESC and a 140 amp motor would be perfect together. So not really sure here or there, but I'm going to go ahead because I've been procrastinating so much on this build and got frustrated over the last two weeks trying to figure out what was up with the footage that I had shot. Um, that's why I'm not even going to go back and show you what I did because it's just, it's all corrupted. I've edited it twice. I've been in the garage multiple times trying to reshoot different things, so I'm not even going to worry about it. Um, basically, I've got the boom tubes glued in, so those are good. I've got the sponsons done. Um, yes, I painted the bottom. We probably will sand them in the future somewhere here or there. I've got my studs here. Those are good. So I still need to make a little carbon fiber offset to where we can get a turn fin. But we're not going to do that because we don't know the length that we need to make it until we determine where the CG of the boat is. Because we want the CG of the boat to end up right where the back of the turn fin is to where we can determine where we need to move that turn fin. So I'm just waiting on that aspect of it. But the rest of the boat is pretty much together. All I have to do is, you know, some little odd and ends. It's really heavy to be completely honest. Um, I'm kind of curious about putting it on a scale and just see what this boat weighs. Cause I can, you know, put the sponsons on it and stuff like that and just weigh it and then compare that to my other boat. So I think that's what we're going to do now before we end the video. We'll go ahead and just plop them both on a scale and see what they both weigh. All right, here we are. We've got our original rigger. Let's test it. Okay. We're at one pound, 10 ounces. One pound, 10 ounces. Without the cover. 
So maybe the two covers, one pound, 11 ounce. But we'll call it 110 for right now. All right, let's put this one on there. One pound, six ounces. Let's go ahead and put the Sponsons on there. Dead nuts, the same. Here's the rear, the rear strut. One pound, 12 ounces. And what we're lacking in this is the drive shaft. We're lacking, we're lacking the flex cable. And we're lacking cooling tubes. So we can just might as well add two more ounces to it. So we'll call that one pound, 14 ounces. So one pound, 10 ounce, one pound, 14 ounce. Four ounce difference. That's a considerable amount of weight. That's a considerable amount of weight. And I think most of it is in my sponsons. I think because I added epoxy and carbon fiber all on the inside of this to beef these up to make them really, really strong, I think it added weight. Also, I added brass tubes on the inside of them too. So, And another thing is we've got to cut these carbon boom tubes down about an inch and a half. Um, they're just, they were longer than the factory ones. So I think what I'm going to do, instead of having them out so far, I'm going to bring them in maybe to about that point there. I just don't see the need in my sponsons being, let's, let's do nose to nose. Yeah. We can bring them in because that right there would be dead nuts square. And you can see just how much stick out on that side. So we have to cut them off. We're dead nut square there, dead nut square there. And yeah, we're gonna have to cut off the boom tubes just a little. But that's neither here nor there. So it looks to me like we're dealing with four more ounces than the original build. So maybe, maybe the original build is what we'll try to shoot for 100 miles an hour. So far that has been nothing but put it together and cross your fingers, hope and a prayer, and the thing is breaking records, you know. I haven't seen a shrimp rigger in the 90s. I think it's freaking awesome. So, I don't know. Just wanted to give you all an update on Project Century because I've been focusing so much on the tunnel hole lately. And uh, my kids, my girlfriend's kids, have been needing some help with their projects and getting ready for, you know, Raleigh, North Carolina's big Galaxy Con, Comic Con, stuff like that. So, can't always do what I want to do. Sometimes we got to do what's needed of us. And I enjoy I enjoy the kids and, and what they do with their Marvel stuff, and they've really got me into it. That's why I name a lot of my boats after Marvel characters, because, you know, that's just something we get to enjoy together. So, But, yeah, cool. I just want to give you all an update on that. And uh, everywhere is a mess. Every... Look at the floor, it's a disaster. That is not me, that is them. But um, we'll spend this weekend cleaning. So I'm gonna go ahead, take the next few hours, and I'm gonna start prepping these props. Cause this is gonna be a cool test. We're gonna, be, we're gonna take out the rigger, and we'll, we'll run all of the Octora V-Series props on the riggers. That's the plan. Hydroplane and these beautiful beautiful props so all right that's gonna be it short and sweet we'll see y'all later peace